are going to look into some of the vector operations, the properties of vectors and how complex vectors play an important role in quantum mechanics and some very fascinating facts and trivia. So this is the seventh lesson in the series of Mathematics of Quantum Mechanics and we have already done a series of learning on complex numbers and now we are going ahead with linear algebra. So this video is very important because it would help you to learn more about the complex plane, the quantum physics and the complex vectors along with the vector operations and some of the properties of vector operations. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to Lesson 7 in this series Mathematics of Quantum Mechanics. So first as we always do let us look into what are the topics we are covering. So first we would look into vector operations. Uh, what is quantum physics and how it plays a role into complex vectors. What is complex plane and we will try to illustrate with certain illustrations and examples. Multiplication of vectors, properties of vector addition and multiplication. What is a vector product and an inner, inner product and what are some of the very fascinating trivias which comes along with our study. So first let us start with vector operations that is the addition. Now earlier in this uh, series we have defined a mathematical concept which is the vector part and it is quite natural for you to ask the question can we add and multiply vectors. The question of multiplying vectors is quite subtle and we will discuss it a little bit later. But when it comes to adding vectors, there is something very intuitive. Now, let us use the following vectors V equals 3, 1 and W equals to 1, 2. Now, imagine the vectors V and W are represented as two different dimensional movements with X, 1, 2, 3 and Y, 1, 2, 3 on a two dimensional plane. For example, V can be thought of as moving along the X by 3 points or 3 numbers and then along the Y axis by 1 and we arrive at this point. Similarly, for W, we can add 2 vectors essentially here, 1 vector and then can move further and we can get into this. So what we can say is that we can start at the origin, move X by 3 then along Y, after that move along X by 1 and then move along x by 2 and we find our final position at 4 along x and 3 along y. So this is the nice illustration which I have just shown in the graph later plotted. So I moved uh, in this uh, direction that is along the x direction and then I moved along the y direction. So that is the final position of 4 along x and 3 along y. Okay. Now we can also employ something which is called a parallelogram technique. Now if you add a little bit of mathematical, uh, I would say mathematical intuition and mathematical formulations into our intuition which we just did, the adding two vectors can be done geometrically by using this parallelogram technique. Now that is putting the second ve vector at the end of the first. So here you see this is the parallelogram technique which I have drawn on the figure and I have just shown you. So we put the second vector at the end of the first. So what we do is that we get V plus W if we get it as 4 and 3. And so we can use this one, the parallelogram technique to visualize vector addition in two dimensions. So this comes as V plus W. So in some sense, we have already defined vector addition using intention. This gives a, uh, I would say, a rigorous definition that it holds for vectors for any dimension including complex vectors. Okay, so vector addition, uh, let us go into a kind of a definition. Adding vectors are just easy. Uh, you, you just add each component, corresponding component and V and W are complex vectors written, X, if V and W are two vectors, then V is written as V1, V2 and W as written as W1, W2 and then by adding we get V1 plus W1 equals to V1 plus W1 plus V2 plus W2. And if we take and extend this more generally, I mean to say we always try to generalize things so that it goes on a much uh, bigger arena. So if V and W are arbitrary n-dimensional vectors, the Jth component of V plus W can be given as this. 
right? So V plus W uh, sub J and uh, V plus W sub J, yeah. So this would be equal to Vj plus Wj. That means, <laughs> simple, we are adding the jth component of V and the jth component of W. Okay. Now, you, uh, we all know that quantum physics doesn't deal really with real numbers. So it deals with complex numbers. And when we are learning the addition of vectors, etc., we should be careful that we also need to learn the addition of vectors in complex numbers. So here is a complex number v i2 and w3 minus 100, and this will result into this. Right? So this is what it is important. <coughs> okay, so one important note is that in case that we get a kind of a vector like Yes, so we cannot add vectors of different dimensions. What do I mean by that is that if I get v equals to, uh, say, for example, 1 and minus 2, and w, if I get it as 1, 3, 2, and this, this can be even i2, doesn't matter, it can be anything, this will write. So what would be v plus w? Right, so what happens is that the answer does not exist or the answer is not defined. So, we cannot add vectors of different dimensions, for example, this one, 1, 2, and then 1, 3, 2. So, the answer of V plus W doesn't exist, or we can say that our answer doesn't uh, really uh, exist. It is not defined. But, however, we can add I plus I2 and 3 minus 100, and we do the vector addition, which results into this. So, this is important. Okay, coming up a very important trivia. Now, we saw that adding two vectors together was very intuitive when we think about vectors describing position in the Cartesian plane. Now, multiplying a vector by a number is also, uh, you know, kind of an intuitive. But what does actually it means to multiply a vector by another vector? What does it mean? So, there is not much intuition about it, but again, yes, because we are doing mathematics. So, if something doesn't exist, we need to invent it. And there is a mathematical operation that is called the cross product, also known as the vector product. So what it does is that it, uh, it is an operation that takes two vectors as inputs and outputs the third one that is perpendicular to the plane from the input of vectors. And this is denoted like this. So as I have told, it's an operation that takes two vectors and then it uh, produces an output that is perpendicular to the flame, uh, plane formed by the input vectors. But it sounds a little bit crazy, but it turns out that the cross product is extremely useful in physics, engineering, and of course, the mathematics that we learn. So don't worry, we will be dealing with cross product and dot product later part, but this is a, just a kind of a uh, fact. Okay, now we come to complex vectors and complex plane. Why? Because ma quantum mathematics always deals with this, so we need to have a a uh, clear understanding of that. So, a complex vector, okay, let me define it. So, a complex vector is uh, simply a vector. We can call it as a matrix of complex numbers. Vector and matrix addition proceed as in the real case uh, uh, for component wise addition, right? So, the daughter inner product of two complex vectors requires a little bit of modification. This is evident when we try to use the old. No notion of defining that length. So, we can say z equals to 1 plus i and 1 minus i. And uh, so, we get this one, right? And you see this t is basically the transpose. Although we have not learned in this series what is a transpose, but we will essentially learn. But is you, you already know those who are aware about linear algebra. So, this is how it happens. Now, remember that length should be measure the distance from a point to the origin and should only be zero and the zero vector. So uh, the uh, point is that as you have probably uh, uh, guessed that the sum of the squares of the magnitude of the component z. So in the above example, it produced the length as z. One plus i plus one by, we are taking the modulus because we want to take the absolute values which results into two. Now, <laughs> this is really uh, a kind of, I would say the, uh, uh, the conjugate itself, this new definition is something. Okay. Now, you see that the notion of magnitude also gives us a way to define limits and hence we can introduce something that we called as 
complex calculus. But don't worry, we are not making things further com complicated. But I just want to show you, uh, it's really so uh, fascinating that if we get a kind of uh, sequence of complex lumber like this, one, two, it goes on, it converges to the complex lumber as uh, this, Zn uh, tending to a Z0, and we can set this one limits up to zero. So this is something which is which we can further, uh, I would say, uh, we can we can we can uh, we can elucidate or we can further expand if you get a series and introducing complex calculus, it gets into this. Okay, here comes a definition of vector space. This is important because we have learned what is a complex plane. We'll go into vector space, but before going into complex vector space, I would like to define what is a simple vector space. So. It's uh, just a space, right? It has got a certain set of elements, often called vectors, which may be added together and multiplied or scaled by scalars. Now, complex vector space is something uh, which is a uh, uh, complex vector space is a vector space whose fields of scalars is the complex numbers. It's just simple. This has got real numbers. This has got complex numbers. Now, the complex vector space, which is denoted by the C, which means complex, is a set of vectors of length n denoted by this. And its complex entries are this v1, v2, dot, 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 ranges up to vn, which is uh, uh, members of the family complex plane C. Uh, and it is given by the conjugate of uh, a vector v of Cn is given by this. But remember, this v1, v2, all these are basically each of these are conjugate entries. Now, that is really important. We understand that all of them are basically conjugate. So, this gives us a clear, clear idea about what is a vector space in general, in real case, real number, and a vector space in complex vector space. Just simply com combines the vector fields whose uh, are what complex numbers. Okay, so here comes few of the definition. Nothing uh, much more really to explain. You can just take a screenshot of this if you want to uh, memorize or you want to take a note. So the standard definition of the product of U V in C N. The inner products are given by this. You see again the transpose happens. I've given a bar to improve that. Uh, there is uh, something like uh, if we take U and V and C N and uh, C equal comes in this, I mean to say this C number comes into complex plane. And the first which comes is C U V equals to C U V. Mind it, we are using angular brackets over here. U C V equals to the C U V. Then comes the third one and then comes this one. Uh, which is greater than 0 for all v and v uh, equals to 0 and if only if v equals to 0 it is called the 0 vector. So these are some of the uh, I would say properties standard inner products on the complex plane. Okay, so we now come to vector operations that is multiplying a vector by, uh, 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 by a number. So uh, as before we will start with this uh, v equals to 1 and 2. Now here is a catch. Now, what if we repeat this procedure twice? What would happen if we repeat the procedure twice? So, what we will get is this one, right? So, we've just multiplied it by 2. Now, what happens? It will end up with uh, a procedure with thrice. So, we uh, get into this 3v as 3, 6, and 1 and 2, right? So, what happens is that uh, now we define the vector scalar multiplication. So, the definition as it goes is we can you can scale a vector by just multiplying each entry by a scalar number. So if we get v equals to v1, v2, and we get c as a number, then the scalar multiplication of v and c gives this one, c v1, c v2. And if you want to generalize, taking it up to n dimensions or any dimension, it is this one. We have shown this earlier also, c v j equals to c v j, outside the braces. Okay. So we uh, look into uh, this as scalar multiplication of a vector by a positive real number really doesn't change its orientation but only its length. You see v equals to 1 and 2 when it scales up to 2 and 4 it remains in the same direction this one marked in blue circle and it doesn't change the uh, uh, orientation. Whereas uh, this one scalar multiplication of a negative number inverts its direction. So you see, once it is minus 2, 4, it has scaled, but it has come down to <laughs> uh, what we call uh, other uh, the, uh, the opposite direction. Okay. So, uh, okay, just to note one thing, in this one, 
we uh, okay so we go to yeah so we go come to the next one so what are the properties of vector addition so if you take u w v as vectors and normal c and d as scalars so what we get one is the uh, the law of commutativity which is this one then we get what is called associativity which you already know is this and then we get a distributive law of scalar multiplication which is quite clear so you can take a pause right now take a screenshot on the otherwise you can find those on internet and the next comes is distributivity of scalar addition which is this and there exists a unique additive zero so that v plus zero equals to v and for any vector v there exists an additive inverse so that v plus minus v so, so if you even do a plane algebra it becomes to zero so the, the, these are similar properties to real and complex numbers remember numbers are actually vectors of dimension one now the, these last two properties might seem a little bit trivial because we added them because we are just about to define something which we did earlier which is called a vector space which doesn't apply to vectors but potentially the other kind of mathematical such functions okay so here is an important trivia coming up we will learn an operation which is called inner product also known as scalar or dot product it is multiplication of it is type of multiplication of two vectors but the result is ultimately scalar <laughs> so that brings us to the end of today's video we learned a little bit about vector operations the different rules and most importantly because quantum mechanics deals all on complex plane and complex vectors we have seen what are complex plane complex vectors and how their operations takes place in the next video what i would be doing is that we would be moving now into vector spaces and then the matrices the matrix operation matrix as functions on vectors this is the agenda for the next video coming up very soon i hope you like this video please subscribe to my channel physics for students click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from physics for students please put up your comment about how this series and everything regarding the mathematics of quantum mechanics going on if you're facing a difficulty please do let me know in the comment box or you can contact me via my email which is there in the channel thank you very much for watching this video and keep an eye because we are continuing with this series of mathematics and quantum mechanics we will be back very soon with a new video up till then goodbye and stay happy thank you for watching this video we appreciate your time and patience if you want to connect with us and provide further feedback comment or suggestions please email us at contact.physicsforstudents@gmail.com you can also follow us on facebook instagram and linkedin see you soon in the next video